a it's personal crazy. issue for me and for millions of Americans, about 45 million of us to be exact. Um, student loan debt. Um, it is a trillion dollar problem in America. I think it is the second, not even I think, I know, um, it is the second highest gross of debt uh, in America only to mortgage debt. And, you know, we spoke about uh, the wealth gap and how important having a mortgage is and having homes are. But um, something is going to be combating that now and in, in, in the future if something doesn't change, and that's student loan debt. Um, so there are some negative effects that it has long term and short term. And we're going to talk about some ways that we, well, not we in a sense, but um, the government is proposing to change that. Yeah, so something came out recently, right? It's yeah. a, it's a, some, what, what happened? What happened? Uh, so we had a report uh, that the Senate is thinking of a way to have employers pay for student loan debt. So right now, they do reimburse people who are going to school. So they will reimburse you for tuition. Um, and that is pretty standard in, in some in fields of employing. But having the debt paid is something that will be very new. And what they're saying is that uh, employers can match up to $5,000 in uh, student loan debt for their employees. It'll be an incentive for people to take jobs, uh, and it will help burden that debt that is pretty much crushing people. Like the average person has $36,000. So what does that mean? What exactly is going to happen? So employers, right? Like if I want to get a job, let's say I, I, I'm a teacher and I want to get a job at a school. And one of the things I ask the employer or the, the school district is, do you guys reimburse for student loan debt tuition? Um, right now that isn't in place, but there are proposals that could do that. And if it passes, they can reimburse up to 5,000. So they're not going to pay your entire payment because I think the average person, um, this is the study showed that the average person spends more on their student loan debt than they do on their monthly groceries, which is like crazy. Like people have to pay more in debt um, than they are eating, which is like ridiculous. Uh, but they'll pay a percentage of it. So even if you're, you're let's say if your uh, student loan payment is seven hundred dollars, right, which is kind of median in, in, in this day and age, um, the employer can say we'll pay two hundred dollars of that. And they'll do that as long as you're with the, the company. So will that be deducted from your salary? Um, no, it's not deducted. It's, it's actually the, the employer gets a tax benefit. The, the employer gets a tax benefit right. for paying off your student loan. Absolutely. It's just like when they do tuition reimbursement. Like people don't know that the employers write that off as a tax deduction. Okay. Yeah. So like that's a new proposal that could happen. Uh, we'll see. Um, because if we don't figure something out... Right. People's lives are being delayed. So like when people come out of college and it should be a celebratory time. Right. We, we go to school four or five years. We get our bachelor's degree. And in most situations now we have to go further and get our master's degree. It's just, we should be celebrating that. But what they people don't realize is that in six months, government's going to come knocking. Right. We need you to start repaying. And the problem is that when people come out of school and they amass so much debt, like if they go to a top line school, it could be. $200,000 that they owe after they finish, you know, with their school, how are they going to repay that? Because you have to come out of school and then find a job that can support you and then also pay back. So what, what you see is that a lot of people, a lot of millennials are living at home longer. They're not having uh, the money to save to buy a house. Uh, you see more people renting uh, and you see people's credits being damaged. That's one of the parts that a lot of people don't really understand is that when you defer on those student loan payments, right, they put you into a firm for about six to 12 months at best. And then right after that, if you don't pay, it affects your credit. So now let's go further. Like if you don't have the credit score now, when you try to apply for apartment, one of the things they check is your credit. Some jobs, when you apply, they check your credit. When you try to get a home, of course, they're going to check your credit. And a lot of being, people are being completely hampered by it because they can't afford to pay the the, uh, the debt. And now long term, they won't be able to come out from the effects of not being able to pay it. So it's like a domino effect of things that are happening uh, because of this debt. Okay. All right. All right. So, so actually, actually if I don't know if, if people, people remember, but well, if you follow my Instagram, I wrote a, I wrote a report about an interesting story in mm -hmm. regards to student loan forgiveness. A few months ago. So yes. in December, the Department of Education announced it was going to cancel thousands of debts for teachers who had grants turned into loans, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, here's the backstory on it. Teachers that were aspiring teachers 
were given grants to go to college, right? Mm -hmm. Then the thing was that you had to work in a low-income school district for four years after you were done with college, right? Then if you worked in a school district for four years after you were done with college, then you didn't have to pay the grant back. It was a grant, right? The problem is that it was all kinds of red tape involved where you had to certify every single year with the Department of Education Mm -hmm. by sending in, I believe, like forms. And if you were like one day late on the form, then your grant turned into a loan. And then you had to get the letter, I think, signed by a principal, but it was during the summertime. So a lot of schools were closed and it was hard to find administrators. And then people moved and then their addresses wasn't updated properly. So they they never actually got the letter in the mail. So what ended up happening is that thousands of inner city teachers had their grants turned into high interest loans, not only loans, but high interest loans. Mm -hmm. And overnight, they were crippled with tons of debt that they didn't know about. So they might have took a grant. They might have had a grant for $50,000. Yeah. And they thought that, you know, it was all good. And they find out that now they're in $50,000 of debt. So a good friend of ours, a friend of the show, she'll be on the show soon, hopefully. Valencia Clay. Mm-hmm. So she's a superstar teacher out of Baltimore. Uh, her name is Valencia underscore Valencia on Instagram. Everybody probably follows her. Everybody knows her. So she's the one that actually told me to write this story. Yeah. Because it happened to her personally. Yeah. Right? Where it affected her where I think she was trying to buy a home and she didn't know that her credit was affected and they said your credit is real low and she's like, what happened? And then she found out that her grant turned into a loan and she was behind on her loan payments. Right. So that happened to thousands of inner city teachers. Yeah. It's a very unfortunate situation. Absolutely. And now, I guess, it's something that they're trying to rectify by saying that they're forgiving a lot of loans. Yeah. Because... So, there, there are a few uh, loan forgiveness programs. Like, I was a beneficiary of a teacher forgiveness loan So, program. you were an inner city teacher. Yes, for, for eight years. years. Eight I mean, years. Eight years. You taught in the, in the Bronx. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yep. So, um, part of the... The loan, and people have to like do their research, like because there are a lot of programs that are being offered to to have loan forgiveness, depending on what career you're in. Um, so for me, like you said, it was the teacher loan forgiveness, and some of the stipulations were you had to work in a inner city school, a Title One school, for five years, and based on what you were teaching. Uh, so if it was math or science, you could be granted a certain amount of money, um, or if it was uh, social studies or English, it was a certain amount of money. Um, but I argued like, hey, if I do science, right, well, what's the difference? We're all teaching, right? So the max you could get was seven seventeen thousand five hundred. Um, so I was I was granted that, which was great, and, and it helped a lot. Um, but there's another uh, loan forgiveness program, which is called the public service loan, and that goes for anybody who works in public service. So if you're a government agent, if, not a government agent, um, government official, you will, you could qualify for this loan if you're part of a five hundred one three B program or if you're obviously a teacher you still qualify the problem is that there are a lot of stipulations and some rev tape like you said so one of the things is you have to pay have 120 consecutive payments you can't miss a payment so that's like 10 years of payments you can't miss and i thought i qualified for that like i had paid my loans on time i applied for this 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 program the public service loan um it's either 10 years or 120 payments consecutive and when i realized is that after I got no response from the government, it was like, this is weird. And then a report came out. They said that 1% of the 45,000 people who applied for the public loan service, uh, public service forgiveness, were granted it. Yes. 1% One, of applicants. The point, it's like 0.8. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. A government program where 1% of the applicants... Yeah. We're accepted. Yeah, because inside of not so the 120 uh, consecutive payments is a thing, but what they don't tell you is like it has to be a specific type of payment plan. It can't, it has to be like an income based one or one that they set where the interest is really high and you have to pay like $700 a month or probably like my, my situation, I didn't leave college with a lot of debt. Um, it's all kind of it's, nonsense yeah, involved. It's ridiculous. It's, co- it's college, you know, the interesting thing about it is that. 
Google, IBM, uh, Facebook, I believe, a few other companies recently dropped the college requirement. Right, they're just taking kids right out of high school. To be hired. Right. So, do we need college? Um, So, it's tough, right? As an educator, like, I'm going to say yes, that, yeah, at some point you you will need some form of college or, right, we can't leave them, or you have to learn a skill, right? And they've been taking that out of schools, right? They used to have schools where you learn trades and you learn skills and you can carry on that into a profession, which is like kind of what you're saying what Google's doing is like, look... If we have kids who have an interest and they are advanced at, if you know how do, to code, you don't need to. You don't right, need like, to go. We're, to college. We're gonna go straight, and we'll teach you on the job. But you have to know how to code, right? And some, a lot of schools are offering that now at high school and at the elementary levels. So if they're not gonna go to college, then yeah, there, there are some careers that they can do, and that's one of the things that we talk about in our summer program. Is hey, everybody's not gonna go, and the way that this is looking is from a cost perspective. This may not be a, 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 the best option for you, so. We have to tell them about careers that they can do without a college degree. So some of the things that they can do are law enforcement. They can be a firefighter. I think you need a college degree to be a cop. No, I think or you just got to go to academy. Years. You got to go to academy. Each state is different. Yeah. So New yeah. York State, I think you have to have two-year degree or two Associates. years. Uh, so with something. Four, it's something. Not a four-year degree. Okay. Yeah. So you got firefighters. You have uh, electricians, plumbers. There's plenty H- of HVAC. There's plenty of careers that you can do without a college degree. Yes, you do need training, and yes, you do need licensing to do those careers. But you're not going to come out of those trainings with a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in debt. I, I had a friend of mine the other day. Uh, his son just got accepted to Ohio State for aviation, full ride. And um, just for curios- curiosity, I said, "How much would that have cost you if he didn't get the full ride?" You know the number? How much? Three hundred thousand for four year. At Ohio State, three hundred thousand. So imagine the kid who doesn't have the full ride, three hundred thousand, and you're twenty one years old. What job is going to pay you the type of money that you can reimburse the government with? Um, no, you're no job. Right. So it's either you're going to pay the student loan or pay your rent at that point. You, and most times they just stay at home. People stay at home longer, like I said. So you got to choose. It's like, is this the best route, or can we go to schools that are going to cost less, or like what New York is doing? You can go to school for free, depending on your uh, family's income. And one of the stipulations is that you have to work in the state in that field. So if you wanted to be a teacher again in New York State, they have the Excelsior program. That's what it's called. Uh, it's free. State schools. The only thing I think. But each is, state is different. Each, like every state doesn't have every like Excelsior have program, but New York State has adopted it, and that's great. Like if I would have had the Excelsior program, I walk out of school with nothing because I went to school in New York. I've worked in only in New York. For more than four years, my tuition would have been free. So hopefully some states start adopting policies like that. Um, and if not, man, we're going to have a huge problem on our hands. Like I said, we it's, already a, have a huge yeah, problem. Right. it's a $1.5 trillion problem now. That only grows because tuitions only grow. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, and this you, is something that we need to talk yeah, about on the campaign trail and elections coming up. And um, I would urge everybody, really, but especially young people and parents to uh, make that something that, you know, you hold your, your, your elected officials accountable for because for financial aid and student loans, and yeah. these things are very important. And it's a growing problem. And it's only getting worse because yeah. the cost of education is only going up. Yeah, and, and the more you know, the better. Like I, I, I speak to parents and I speak to you know young teens all the time who have no idea about these things. Like when we when we have these sessions in the summer and the kids are like, wait, that's how much it costs? Like, yeah, that's what you're walking into. So just be prepared to know that and make sure that you do everything possible, whether it's grants or whether it's scholarships, um, so that you don't fall into this, this, this type of situation. Right? Because 36,000, that's the average. That's a lot, man. Yeah.